संस्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नम जननी शारदा देवी रामकृष्ण जगद्गु पाद पद्मे तयो श्रुवा प्रणमा मुहुर्मु नम श्रीयतिराजाय विवेकानंदसूर सच्चिस्सुखस्वय स्वामीनेतापहारिणे Today happens to be the blessed Tithi Puja, birthday of uh, Sri Maswami Sardar and Duchi Maharaj. We are all deeply indebted to him, not only us, maybe the generations to come, for the next thousand years, all those who would come into contact with this Ramakrishna movement, they will all be deeply beholden to him because of the exceptional life of Sri Ramakrishna which he has produced. This is an extremely authentic uh, version of uh, the life of Sri Ramakrishna which he wrote in Bengali under the title The Leela Prasanga and that has been translated into English. Sarat Maharaj was very exceptional in certain ways. Of course, each disciple of Sri Ramakrishna was for that matter very special and very exceptional. It appears as though Sri Ramakrishna chose his disciples from a huge variety of spiritual giants, so to say. So they told me, we have quite a good mixture, so to say. Someone like Nayendranath, who became later Swami Vivekananda, so brilliant, so powerful an orator, and naturally a giant of a personality, so to say. And you have at the other end people like Lord Maharaj, who are virtually illiterate, but yet spiritually illumined to the highest degree. So in that uh, scale or in that order, where do we really place Sarat Maharaj? Sarat Maharaj ke mulo kahan rakhenge? Ohi iski andar. Actually, in some sense they say Sarat Maharaj was perhaps next to Swami Ji, next to Swami Vekananda. The most well-rounded personality, a person who was equally good in all the yogas that way. In his life, you can see perhaps the best combination of the four yogas. Chari yog par unki kshamata, that was something really, really outstanding. Because, you know, on one hand, he was a great Jnani, Tapasvi, even if you read the Lila Prasanga, you will understand that how he has, every stage, whenever he has introduced any new topic or new idea, he has taken the Puro Paksha, as it were, the other view, and argued it out. So that way, you know, there is a very clear streak of the nature of a Jnani in him, that he was so logical and uh, so based on reason are his uh, arguments are the uh, matter which is marshaled in this wonderful book. And of course naturally he was so kind, soft and uh, compassionate which are all the qualities of a bhakta or a person who is devotional by temperament. And Sri Ramakrishna himself identified him as one of the companions of Jesus Christ in the former incarnation. So in that sense, his uh, devotional nature, because he was, uh, I mean, he was so devoted to 
holy mother that you no know, mother would say that accepting sharat no one else can really take my burden mere bhar dusra koi nahi samaj sakta hai sharat chhod ke so mother would always feel comfortable if sharat maharaj is around so anything any problem any issue she would immediately refer to sharat maharaj so sharat maharaj was why because sharat maharaj was so devoted to the holy mother if that is so you can very well understand that how devoted he was to sri ram krishna and in that sense his nature as a devotee or a bhakta actually sharat maharaj was so devoted to mother but then you know mother was always koi even in front of her the, the children of front of the children of sri ram krishna kabhi bhi she would never lift her veil a bade lamba वही वेल पहन के वो बातें करते थे दूर से तो तीसरी व्यक्ति तो जब भी कोई स्वामी जी का कोई प्रणाम करने के लिए जाता था वो कुछ वो सामने जो पास में जो खड़ा रहा कोई महिला का कुछ दो चार शब्द खाते थे वही सुन के जो आया प्रणाम करने के उनके साथ वही बातें करते थे सो इन एवर इवन यू डायरेक्टली टॉक टू देम लेकिन शरद महाराज तो माँ की इतनी नजदीकी आदमी थे ऑब्वियसली यू नो यू ऑल्सो पर हैड इट इन इज हार्ट मैं कुछ सीधा कोई सेवा नहीं कर सकता आई कैन नॉट डू एनी सर्विस टू मदर बिकॉज इज ऑलवेज यू नो बहुत दूर से प्रणाम करना सी वुड सिट बिलो इन द सेम उद्बोधन हाउस नीचे बैठते थे वही छोटी कमरा में बैठ के सब सारे सब किताब वहाँ ही लिखा था नो इल बी इल बी सरप्राइज यूर नाउ द डेस्क इज सो स्मॉल एंड सतमा सच ए बल्की पर्सन so obviously he couldn't even bring it very near because you know there would always be a dish he can't normally the way he used the desk he couldn't even use it because it was so small even now you can see the desk it is there but yet he would rarely go up to see the mother niche se sab khabar lete the maharaj ki kya vyavastha kya hai kya nahi hai at least you know in most of the things you know what all we have in the ramakrishna mission today greatly we owe it to sharat maharaj because माँ के जी जन्म स्थान वही जागा भी नहीं मिलता था उस समय इट वॉज सो डिफिकल्ट ब्रदर्स इवन पार्ट विद पार्ट ऑफ एंसेस्ट्रल प्रॉपर्टी माँ के जी पारिवारिक संपत्ति थे सब सो नेचुरली नो दे वुड दे वुड नॉट इवन अलाउ दैट बट शरद माँ इज वेरी एंक्शियस माँ की वहां करना है कुछ सो यू नो यू वट नॉट ओनली दैट यू गॉट द thing and got the temple constructed inaugurated everything he got done but it was a big task because the brothers wouldn't allow so he had to mediate yes he, he had to do and you know he so liberally paid for all that uh, useless land in those days kya tha kya gramin ka kuch zameen tha what was that but he knew that in time to come these will all be extraordinary places of pilgrimage आज हम लोग कितनी हजार हजार लाख लोग आई थिंक सेवरल लाख्स ऑफ पीपल हैव विजिटेड जयराम बटी फ्रॉम दैट टाइम टिल डेट ये सब संभव हुआ सिर्फ शरद महाराज के काम से बिकॉज ही वाज सो फोर्स साइटेड दे वर हिगलिंग हैगलिंग फॉर द प्राइस दैट पे टेक इट उसमें पैसा भी नहीं था इनफैक्ट ही रोड इला प्रसंग ओनली बिकॉज ही हैड टू पे ऑफ द डेट्स वे मां रहने के लिए कलकत्ता में उद्बोधन की जे मकान जो उन्होंने किया था फॉर दैट ही हैड टू बोरो मनी एन इमेजिन साधु इज बोरोइंग मनी टू कंस्ट्रक्ट अ हाउस बिकॉज ही फेल्ट दैट होली मदर कलकत्ता में आके यहां वहां रहना पड़ता है शी हैज टू स्टे हियर एंड देयर लेट मदर हैव अ परमानेंट प्लेस सो ही टू क्लोन एंड बिल्ड दैट हाउस एंड टू रीपे दैट ही वाज राइटिंग दिस बुक यू नो आफ्टर द सेल प्रोसेस दैट लोन विल बी लिक्विडेटेड एट दैट टाइम even at a heavy cost he purchased that land of jarambati so that mother uh, birth place can have a temple at the very spot where mother lived so you know he was so liberal and he purchased and not only that whenever there was even the family property the division he had to personally supervise and do i mean you can imagine his extraordinary spiritual stature sadharan to साधु जो होना चाहते हैं बनना चाहते हैं घर क्यों छोड़ते हैं ये सब झंझाट में नहीं रहना चाहते थे लेकिन गिवन अप एवरीथिंग लॉन्ग अगो उससे भी क्या तीस चालीस साल पुराना हो गया था स्टिल 
just for the sake of mother just for the sake of the ramakrishna order he personally supervised the division of the property he settled the disputes everything so that you know the place becomes peaceful everything was taken care of he was so thoughtful in his uh, approach and uh, so foresighted and you know this is a very 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 touching incident how the holy mother also she being the divine mother how she fulfilled this small lingering wish in the mind of sharat maharaj wo oh, sharat maharaj ki ichhe the man mein ichha tha main kabhi bhi kuch seva sidha kar sak sak ma ke but that opportunity was not coming and it happened in a very strange way kyunki wo ma to bimari ke samay in the end towards the end of her life she became naturally you know after all the body also has certain limitations she had really taken so much so much of suffering so much of deprivation so much of difficulties finally you know in traces the human element and the divine was showing up it was impossible for her to completely keep away that aspect from her life so she was sometimes feeling little irritated little agitated because she was suffering so much you know the fever was not coming down it was so very a virulent form of uh, fatal malaria or whatever it is so finally you know a fall people she picked up <laughs> sarala who was her dearest of dear sevikas because sarala naturally she was uh, practically a trained nurse so to say at the time so she was you know constantly she had been asked to take the temperature and uh, be careful about mother's diet ma ki jo khane ki dete the bahut sadharan se jo doctor jo unki anumati diya tha uske alawa kuch dene ka avashyak nahi tha lekin rogi log jaise karte hain are wahi kitne din doodh sirf pe sakte hain so ma was getting finally irritated she said no i won't take always you come and you force with that feeding bottle पियो पियो करके मैं नहीं लूंगा तुम्हारे हाथ से एंड एवरी टाइम यू कम एंड पुट दैट स्टिक इन माय दिस थिंग बगल एंड आई वोट अलाव यू गो एंड सर लव वॉज वेरी मच सरप्राइज क्योंकि अंत में तो कुछ माँ तो कुछ तो लेना चाहिए अदरवाइज शी वॉज सो वीक एंड शी वॉज नॉट टेकिंग एनी थिंग एंड शी आई वोट टेक मिल्क फ्रॉम यूर हैंड यू ऑलवेज कम विद थर्मा मीटर एंड ट्रबल मी and my uh, my didn't even know what was it she said that stick you put under my armpit every time what is it you go away and finally you know then as usual benavar mother would uh, protest or uh, not agree ek hi astra un log ke paas tha turant sab bata dete main abhi sarat maharaj ke bulaunga that day mother was so I mean adamant sir bula kya hai bulao sarat ko so it was late at night satma has actually woken up from his rest and uh, she said mother is uh, she is not obeying anything she is not taking milk she is completely you know uncontrollable you please come immediately and so as was said and satma the dor dor ke aage so jab uh, maa ke paas aaya mother was totally different unhone itna sab kaha tha sarala ko lekin jab satma jaye ah bacha tumko itni raat mein नींद से उठा के लाना पड़ा वी गे गे यू सो मच ट्रबल माई माई सर यू आर एट दिस लेट आवर यू हैव टू बी डिस्टर्ब देन यू नो सर मा तो दूसरी इधर उधर बातें करके करके समाओ ही मेड मदर फॉर गेट देन सी सर माँ अभी थोड़ा सा क्या दूध पी सकते कैन यू टेक लिटिल मिल्क नाउ मदर हाँ 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 देना देन शी मेडली अग्रीड and slowly slowly with the same uh, feeling instrument sat maharaj made mother and he said nahi nahi jaldi jaldi mat lijiye dheere dheere jiriye kha bet dheere dheere aap lijiye jaldi jaldi the kono dikkat hoga hey dekho kitni achhi baatein karte hain sarala does not know see the sarad how beautifully he is feeding he is consoling his and she was so happy mother and actually you know har roz kaise kar sakte ek din to theek hai आपकी तो हर रोज वैसे ही करना पड़ा देन नेचुरली यू ऑल्सो हैव ह्यूमन एलिमेंट शरद माया तो साल में एक दिन के लिए किया हर की हर दिन वैसे कर सकते थे मेरा तो ध्यान नहीं होता था बट दैट डे ही वाज ऑल कंपैशन बिकॉज उन्होंने तो एक दिन मौका मिला 
Oh, that the means itna sambhav kar lunga aaj. Whatever is possible, I will get done today because I am not going to get another chance. So let me pour all my shraddha, all my pyaar, prem, sab dhal ke let me do. So he was doing so joyfully. And mother was also so much touched. And you see how Sarat Maharaj, how Sarat knows how to feed, how carefully, how beautifully he is saying, you know, he is saying you take rest, don't do it in hurry. Hey, Sarala does not know anything. And, and she allowed herself to be fed. And finally, you know, she was so consoled and so restful. She again and again said, see my son, we had to disturb you at this night. You please go and take rest and all that. And mother was just a normal son. Isiliya, you know, they say probably this is another hidden Leela of the Divine Mother because Sarala was so dear to Holy Mother. She was perhaps as dear as Sarath himself because she had served Mother so faithfully. Itni din, she was, you know, like a shadow she was serving the Holy Mother day and night completely without any rest, without any personal uh, requirements. She was really, I mean, she was so devoted to Mother. And, uh, you know, to just push her away. So that's why, you know, somewhere in some biographies they write it, maybe Ma chate te sarat kvi ek baar kam se kam mokha dena hai. Normally, you know, when everything is all right, she cannot call. Kisi natak karke, somehow she had to play this drama that she is not satisfied with Sarla and then here she had to call sarat and uh, somehow to give him the chance. Otherwise, Mother would never, you know, allow herself to be projected as a divine personality or a spiritual giant and all the way. She did it. No, look, Sarat wanted to give her to her service. Then that would look that it was different. But here she did it in a very beautiful way without even uh, anyone getting a hint of it. Because when she was born, she was born in the past, she was born in the past. इसके बाद जो हुआ उसी से तो पता चलता है दैट मेबी इट वाज क्लियरली अ प्ले ऑफ द डिवाइन मदर देन सतमाज वेंट अवे देन नेक्स्ट डे से सरला तो नजदीक आने बंद कर दिया शी वाज नॉट कमिंग डियर द मदर शी वाज सो क्लोज एंड शी वाज सब दूर दूर से सब करते हैं मां की जितनी का आप दूर से करते हैं नजदीक नहीं आते शी इज नॉट कमिंग डियर द मदर बट शी डूइंग एवरीथिंग मदर वाज रिक्वायर्ड मां तो एक दिन देखा देन इमीडिएटली शी अंडरस्टूड बिकॉज़ she knew that, you know, she was so dear to her. And then she sent for Sarala. She called her. She said, Sarala, because of old age, I have become like this. I have become very old age. Because of old age, I am not able to retain that kind of same equanimity or calmness. Sometimes I feel because of Sarir ki taklip se. Because I am so much suffering sometimes, maybe. But uh, do you think that I can really be angry with you? Toda do char baate karte karte to Sarla was weeping and uh, naturally mother loved her so much. Not only that, no, baad mein bhi uske baat kuch instruction diya tha. Kaise rana jagat mein, how she should live, how she should continue. Because now towards the end, uh, Sarla was so inconsolably weeping because she knew that mother is going to go away. She said, I cannot uh, stay after you. Then mother told her, made provisions, made it, mother did everything for her. So this was a small little incident to give perhaps an occasion or opportunity to Sarkmaj also to exhibit his uh, quality. And not only that, the one desire in his heart that he had done so much for mother, but some little personal service, Guru ki personal service, mother, ma ki, something very personally he wanted to do and to give that opportunity. So, you know, you get Sartmana's devotional temperament through all that, the way he was doing. And if you say, Karam ki baat kare, he was perhaps the greatest Karmi Yogi because so silently, year after year, year after year, Swamiji made him the secretary. Now, we have the general secretary. At that time, there was only the post of secretary. But he was virtually the chief executive of the order, chief administrator of the order. And you know, in the initial stages, simply kitna niyam ki kanan ki to sawali nahi ta. It was so difficult at those times. Sadhu log to amesha hai. Sadhus are so independent spirited. 
इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू कंट्रोल दम बिकॉज जिन्होंने सब तोड़ फोड़ के हैं वो कैसे किसी को क्यों मानेंगे क्यों सी द होल थिंग दी रामकृष्ण ऑर्डर द बेस लिव दिस इज सेल्फ वॉज समथिंग वेरी न्यू ए न्यू एक्सपेरिमेंट विच वॉज नॉट देयर एवर इन दिस्ट्री एटलीस्ट द हिंदू ट्रेडिशन बिफोर श्री रामकृष्ण इट वॉज कंप्लीटली ए न्यू मॉडल विच स्वामी विवेकानंद रियली डिस्कवर्ड एंड पुट इट इन टू प्रैक्टिस सो नैचुरली दो केम द एशियल स्टेजेस Nobody is, you know, many of us come. I mean, as the days go by, still many others are coming. They are directly from the world, and you know, they don't even appreciate in great depth the uh, extraordinary requirements of a monastic life. A sadhu banne ke liye jo qualities, jo gunavli ki prayojan, jaroorat hai. Uske baare mein to jada to nahi jaate. Abhi bhi jo ladka log aa rahe hain, because you know, they are directly from the world. Koi IT expert है कोई कंप्यूटर एक्सपर्ट है इंटरनेट एक्सपर्ट है सो इंजीनियर डॉक्टर सो मेनी आर कमिंग बट दो बिकॉज इट वॉज सो क्लोज टू द टाइम्स ऑफ ठाकुर मान स्वामी जी डायरेक्ट डिसेपल मेनी ऑफ दोज यूज टू बी एक्स्ट्रॉर्डनरी त्यागी तपस्वी लोग समथिंग डिसग्रीमेंट इमीडिएटली दे विल गो अवे गो फॉर तपस्या फॉर फॉर मंथ वन आर टू ईयर्स दे वोट कम बैक बिकॉज they were all you know it was a different atmosphere altogether so in those days to keep the order together whenever there was anything they would immediately say if nobody could solve those problems would be referred to sharat mahal because he was so full of compassion love calmness personified so deeply you know nobody could excite him he was one person there is not even perhaps a single instance Where we find that Sharma got irritated and Sharma got angry. I have never seen anywhere in his life story or anywhere else because he was endowed with an extraordinary temperament. So, he, so I'm just saying, dilemma che rakto that that type of type of fish where you know the blood is so cold, I mean it, it never gets excited. That kind of because you know even in the most difficult times. Whenever there was a problem, even if other direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna could not manage, all those cases would be referred to Sharat Maharaj because they knew that his very approach, his very nature, his temperament would make them all feel calm and it will solve the situation. That is how he was. So in every instance, whenever there was problem, there were serious problems even at that time. Actually, it was a formative years, and there were a lot of other administrative issues, other monastic value-related issues. Everything he would handle very beautifully. So, and you know, he worked tirelessly. After all this administration, almost you know, he left his world in 1926, and mother was alive till 1920. That means, excepting for the last five or six years. till that time he had to completely manage the household of the holy mother take her entire responsibility in every sense her travels her arrangements medicine treatment financial matters everything he had to shoulder in addition to shouldering the entire responsibility the organization because holy mother was not part of the order no? she had a separate household she was a uh, huge number of disciples thousands of disciples even many of the disciples of shri krishna would go to holy mother because they knew that she was an extraordinary spiritual giant so she had establishment one in jharambati one in kolbara one in calcutta so to provide her sevaks the attendance other requirements travel arrangement everything sharma had to do not only really that you know there were three or four stark mad people living with holy mother obviously all those responsibilities also spilled on to sharat maharaj he was managing everything plus he had done this construction of the udbodhan house he was managing he, he was getting up a temple built at the birthplace of uh, sharada devi then he was writing a book to write such a monumental work in that condition where there were visitors day and night you can imagine what a great karma yogi was a person really what is described in gita without any sense of attachment karmanne va adhikarasse ma phalish kadachana if there is any standing example of such a karma yogi that is sharat mahara so he did all that and not only that no with all that absolutely no show no flamboyance he was so unassuming yet neither that kind of an external look nor was he 
Nobody knew him to be a very great orator or this and that. But he was a great scholar as you read from this book. He was thoroughly studied. He was so he was a jnani, he was a bhakta, he was a karma yogi and he was a yogi also. Because you know such calmness, such deep contemplative nature, only such people can produce such books. And apart from all that, he was very well versed in tantras. Perhaps one of the uh, perhaps the only disciple among Sri Ramakrishna who was so well versed in the tantras also. To add to one more dimension, not only the four yogas, he was well versed in the tantras also. He had taken the formal initiation under tantra. So he was so well versed in every scripture, every school of thought and he was such a combination of jnana, bhakti, yoga and karma and he was see he was not only that no, so unassuming, so selfless see when uh, Raja Maharaj passed away in 1922 there was time to elect the next president of the order, Abhikon president Baning. naturally Sarat Maharaj was the unanimous choice because you no, know, they knew that after Swamiji he was the most all round personality, he knew there was such a wonderful balance of all the four yogas and he was such a spiritual giant and you know he was one person when whom the entire order obeyed and respected so much so unanimously they wanted him to be the president but he quietly declined saying that no Swamiji meru par jo bhar arpan kiya tha mere ko sangha ka ek kaam karne ka chalane ka daitva diya tha mein ohi palan karu Swamiji made me secretary I will die as a secretary I don't want to do anything else so much he was not only to Dakur and Mahat, devoted to Swamiji also. Swamiji is a car, I will do it. Whatever he told me, I will follow till the end of my life. I don't want anything else. He refused to become president. I will say, Hajar Hajar Sishri Mante Te Unko Bhi. See, you know, now you begin, really, you know, these are the things, you know, that should really make us reflect on Loki Jeevan Me. We also do work, we also do paid work, we do voluntary work, we work as sadhus. That kind of uh, obedience. Whatever Swamiji said, I won't in, move an inch away from the line drawn by Swamiji. He has clearly said, you do this, I will do this all my life. So, you know, that is why they could raise so much in spiritual stature. You know, we, we often complain that we are not progressing, that it, nothing is happening because, you know, we are not reflective about our own lives. Look, I say, karenge, kya karenge. Whenever we do, we start immediately finding fault, finding complaints, doing this, doing that, what is required, what is not required. See, that is why, you know, Karma Yoga, Swamiji has said clearly. But, you know, unless it is done the right way, instead of taking us forward, it will take us backward. It's a struggle, no doubt. But, you know, we get a task, we are so fussy about conditions, we are so fussy about responsibilities, kis kino, kis, kitne bataya, what is the role, this and that. We get involved in so many other irrelevant issues, is it not? So, you know, Saratma in that way, you know, is an extraordinary example, an extraordinary model for all of us. Because, you know, if you read and follow Saratma's life, he clearly sets before you a great example how the combination of four yogas is possible. You know, if you, for example, if you see Swamiji, you are overwhelmed by his intellect. Itni tikshna unki chintan, his sharp intellect, his capacity to think, incisive logic, arguments. So you get carried away by his, uh, that oratory. You know, you also want to become a great speaker, a great this thing, such a towering personality. And if you go to a person like Raja Maharaj, you are always, you know, the idea of samadhi, the bhavas, the spiritual modes, being absorbed in contemplation, meditation, jata se jata jap karna, those are things seem to attract us in one way. And you know, even if you go to people like Latima, hey, pada, 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 hai, sab jurat nahi hai, throw all the books aside, let us do only japa. And if you go to a person like Akhanda Araji, din raat kaam karo, 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 nothing else, day and night. But you know, if you go to Sharat Maharaj, if you read his life carefully, we get a wonderful admixture of all the four qualities. Jnan, Bhakti, Yog, Karmika, Samanvai, Kisi Jeevan Me, you always find. See, the point is, you know, you can follow any model. Aap jo bhi model aap anasan karein, dikkat nahi hai, but you must do it sincerely. Aap Akhandaran ji ki model mein jate jate, aap Raja Maharaj ki model ki baare mein soche, aapko galat ho jayega. See, you must 
Either usually, when you think about other models, you must also think how this can be integrated into my own life. Mera jivan mein kaise utar na usse. It's not e- it's easy to think that I will also become like a Raja Mahal. Kya sambhav hai? Does it happen like that? Or does, by merely stating, can we become another Akhandananji? The way he did that uh, relief work, the way he started that Anath Ashram, how they could Hindus, Muslims, everybody could live, such children from every community, hunt this life. See, so much so, you know, he even after becoming president, he would spend more time in Sarkachi than in Belurman. Abhi to Belurman ka president ban gaye. Lekin, he was more busy because he was so devoted to that job. See, if you find that, you know, in each one of their life, then many of them, not only they were so much devoted to Thakur, whatever Swamiji said was law for them. Kyo? Thakur Narin ko amlo ka netha banaya. Thakur made Narin the leader of us. So whatever Narin says is Thakur's nirdish. That was the attitude. That is why Shant Maharaj was so successful in spiritual life because he literally followed Swamiji and Swamiji never spoke anything which Ramakrishna did not say. So naturally he was literally following Thakur's where Thakur dictates and that is why he was growing so much in spiritual life. He himself became a spiritual giant. So Akhandanaji literally followed Swamiji, gave his life and he was such a giant person. Each one of them. See, each one could have started a separate organization by themselves. Each one of them was such a powerful spiritual giant of personality. But all of them completely effaced their own individual identity and merged it with Sri Ramakrishna through the bidding of Swamiji. Swamiji ke beech mein rakke un log Thakur ke paas paunchi. Because they knew that following the route given by Narendra was the one which would please Sri Ramakrishna and take them to the ultimate goal of life. So they were, you know, it was such a well-knit orchestra, so to say. Because each one was playing, but koi besur mein koi nahi gata tha. Everybody used to sing in the same tune because it was all set by Swamiji who was the master was controlling the whole orchestra by his signals and everybody was playing according to the tunes which Swamiji had uh, told them. So, you know, Sarathma's life is a combination but behind that also you see that whatever Swamiji had told, whatever Swamiji had dictated, his order, his dictate, that was supreme and that is why he could run and run it so successfully. One of his greatest achievements was the first convention of the Ramakrishna order which he got organized in 1926. It was a remarkable occasion, extraordinary occasion. Some of the direct disciples were still alive like Mahaprish Maharaj, then uh, and uh, Akhandananji, Vigyananji, Shrat Maharaj, Abhidhananji, they were all alive at that time. And you know, it was a marvelous occasion. With that, he really gave up everything. I think the end of that year or next year, he gave up his body. So, Saradman's life, if you read, you get a wonderful model of a combination of the four yogas. But at the same time, you have to remember that it will be successful only again, you need a guiding principle. See, Swamiji himself says somewhere, unless you are you have a combination of the four yogas, you will not be really cast in the mold of Sri Krishna. The mold of Sri Krishna was an embodiment of all the four yogas. So, if you have to be really trained that way, if you have to reach a spiritual perfection according to Sri Krishna, there must be a play of all the four yogas in your life. And through Saratma's life, we get a wonderful example as to how that can be done. So, you know, of course, the days he spent with Sri Krishna, we do not get much of a description. Saratma, Thakur ke saath kaise raha? What were all that, that exchange between them? Just is a name in Rai. Aapki Kathamrath Padiye Jobi. There are casual references here and there. Satma is not mentioned much at all, unlike Narain or somebody else. So, Jada Vaha Nahi Likha Nahi Hai. Lekin, through this Lila Prasanga, when you read that, because somewhere Satma himself clearly said that, I have not written anything in this book which I have not experienced myself. Here there is detailed descriptions about Nirvikalpa Samadhi, other Samadhis. You can understand how much he had realized himself. He said, I have not written anything in this book which is beyond my experience. 
So that is why he could clearly portray Sri Ramakrishna. Unless he was a person of samadhi, a person of such exceptional spiritual luminosity, how he could describe Sri Ramakrishna so beautifully? It is one of the most authentic lives of Sri Ramakrishna which will really stand the test of times because there is no supernatural element in it. There is no athimukti. There is no exaggeration. Everything is made down to earth, analyzed very incisively, very logically, presenting all the other views. Kitni puru paksha sab isme dal diya. Whatever may be the objections, before others he himself were raised in every place and that is why this life is so charming to read. So he has clearly made and not only that, you know, to follow that model, he must always remember that behind Sratmaras, these four yogas, was his deep devotion to Swamiji. Because Sratmaras had, you know, he was so devoted to Swamiji. When Swamiji said, You come to West, he simply went. See, if you read maybe in the, some of the books of Swamiji's brother, that Mahendra Gupta, you will know that how Sratmaras was struggling in the initial years. Because he had, he had not much of a knowledge of English. In those days, to go abroad without really being well grounded in that language, kitni kashtka kame. And he was specifically called for preaching, not for any relief work. He was specifically called to give spiritual ministration, to give talks, to conduct classes. But simply because Naren Bulaya me jaunga. Absolutely that obedience to leader. And that is what really raised him up so much. That's so why he was he was unquestionably perhaps the most admired among the direct disciples because his life was absolutely free from any controversy, never any kind of irritation. If Sharma says nobody will say no. He was immediately they will accept whatever he said because he was, you know, so I mean appealing in his approach. And so behind that are the two ideas, his devotion is obedient to Swamiji and his total obedience to the Divine Mother who came as the Holy Mother. So he was so devoted to Mother that really, you know, put the seal on all his actions, all his life. By serving the Mother, he got so much of spiritual power. See, that is the that is what happens when you serve an extraordinary spiritual power. A spiritual personality, she would in turn definitely pass on much of those spiritual power to the sevaks. Whosoever, that is why, you know, even in a small way, when Saraladi later on become Bharti Prana, even now they say he was the most outstanding president of Sharada Mat because, you know, the very contact, the very closeness to such a giant personality as the Holy Mother also added to the spiritual luster of Sharadaranji was otherwise himself was a great luminary. See, you can imagine this person's humility. A person, one of his maybe childhood friends came and told him, Maharaj, I Siddhanta Leliya, I will leave everything and leave everything. He was a very advanced, you know, Sharadaranji's boyhood friend. He must have been well past 60 or whatever it is. So he came to tell Maharaj, I am going to give up everything and you are a wonderful person. It was cold and he was putting on sweater and all that. You are giving up everything. I am so attached. I have put on so much winter clothing and all that. He was, you know, that way. Not only that, you know, he was so compassionate. Someone was living in some one of these slums. And that person was in his deathbed. He was dying out of a very contagious disease like TB or something. In those days there was no cure for TB. TB was considered a fatal disease. He sent word that he would like to see Sarat Maharaj. Sarat Maharaj was the highest personality in terms of uh, in the scales, hierarchy of administration, was the secretary of the order. He quietly, one day after food or something, when everybody was probably resting, nobody would look for him at that time. Not that when he was busy. When we go, we announce everywhere. We keep on announcing so that everybody knows that you go and see, visit somebody. He went at a time when nobody would even knew 
know that he was absent. Quietly went along, he took a brahmachari. And not only that, he went and he sat by his side. And in that condition, that person offered something. Satma took it. Nobody would have done it. One thing because not only he was extremely great as a spiritual personality, <coughs> his compassion. And he knew that that person's mind, how it would feel, you know, if he doesn't take it. And how joyful he would be even if he takes a small portion. Simply he did not think about his body, about his health or anything. He was quite old. Perhaps these were the reasons why he died also uh, very relatively early. He did not care. He simply took it. And when the Brahmacharya was protesting, he said, Please, don't tell anybody. This is something because otherwise, at least that person got so much of happiness and joy because I took something. After all, the body would go one day. What is there? So, you know, these are all small incidents. You know, but that really give an insight into the depth of the personality. You know, when if you read Sarathmara's reminiscences by some of the people, you will be amazed how ordinary housewives how you would even handle those small children, giving them some joy, making some fun with them, giving them small, small games. You know, in fact, one, one small child, you know, you would go and take the desk and you'd sit, may Saradma Radhe I am writing like Saradma, somebody would. So much he was uh, such an adorable soul, even for young children, in spite of his age, stature, and being a spiritual personality. There it is where real greatness lies. Uh, someone who could associate, whether it is a 5 year old child or a 50 year old man or a 80 year old uh, 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 person, still you know he was equally endearing, equally adorable, equally affectionate, equally considerate for every person. So you know it was, if you read Sarkma's life you feel amazed how a person of such a stature, how he could contain himself. You know actually you know the greater and greater one grows in spiritual life. Perhaps the more and more one is able to keep it under wraps, keep it concealed. Even if you, of course, if you magnify it thousand times, you get Holy Mother's life. Satma, after all, you know, modeled himself so much on Holy Mother. Even in that humility, concealing his own spiritual greatness, probably he followed the Holy Mother. Because, like Mother, he was also totally concealing. And nobody could even imagine that he was such a giant of a personality spiritually. So, you know, when we read this uh, Lila Prasang also, we should constantly remember Sharat Maharaj, his life, his contribution. Because the whole life gets authenticated by not only the narrative or the literal account, but the personality behind it. Not only the personality of Sri Ramakrishna, the personality of Sharat Maharaj, who was the writer of this biography of Sri Krishna because he was so spiritually illumined it is an absolute truth and truth alone is contained in this book there is nothing else so we can take it virtually like a Veda and we can rely upon this to meditate on Sri Krishna to know about him to think about him to ruminate about his life and the incidents and in turn get spiritually benefited you know some of the Swamis used to tell us don't keep on reading this interpretation, that explanation, rather. Go to the original text. Don't go to the original words. When you read Lila Prasanga, it's not just reading. It's a kind of meditation. It's a kind of Lila Chintan. You are thinking about an extraordinary spiritual life, an avatara, through the words, through the expression of someone who himself lived an extraordinary life. So it is doubly, it gets a double sanction and double authenticity when you read such a work. And this reading itself is nothing less than doing a japa or a dhyana and Sri Ramakrishna. That is the effect of reading Lila Prasanga because that was written by Sharat Maharaj. Today is Rabir Maharaj's Janmatiti birthday. Let's pray and pay our homage to Sharat Maharaj and also pray that he guides us and gives us the necessary wisdom and the capacity to understand this insightful life story of Sri Ramakrishna so that that helps us in our growth in our growth of our spiritual dimension that's what we should really pray for Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat
ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಾರ್ಪಣ ಮಸ್ತು